Hey guys, what is happening today? It's another episode. I don't know how many I've done. <clears throat> Three of skid marks. Sorry, TPF. This is Todd. <sighs> what should we talk about today? These are just meant to be casual conversations between you and I, and it's more important that I get um, a better understanding of your opinion than mine. Mine doesn't matter much. But as a dialogue starter, what should we talk about in Formula One? What has happened in Formula One? Well, the big news today was that Formula One announced that they are canceling the Baku Grand Prix and the Singapore Grand Prix. And that's unfortunate. And I guess on one side, if you are worried about the COVID-19 virus in large mass gatherings, racing in city centers may not make the best sense. So that's what they've chosen to do. The one that stings, though, is that they announced also today that they're canceling the Japanese Grand Prix. And the Suzuka circuit is always at the top of everyone's list as one of the best tracks and, and a great race, and the drivers love it. And that one stings. That one hurts a little bit. Um, I always love the Japanese Grand Prix. The Japanese fans are, are terrific. Um, yeah, that one hurts. Uh, I've been good for Red Bull and Honda. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was hoping they would be able to pull that one off. But um, anyway, let me know what you think. That one stings. It's not that Australia doesn't or um, others don't. They all do. And this is such a truncated season. It's very, very difficult. And but one of the answers that I found kind of interesting <clears throat> is that Ross Braun at F1 said, hey, look, these three may be canceled, but we've got a lot of options and we could come back and there may be more races in Europe that we could do. And was uh, there's been some talk of even throwing out like Emila, returning to Emila, um, or even possibly Mugello um, as, an, as an option as well. Um, point is is that they have enough right now in Europe to do an eight race season which is what they need for a championship but in order to get the full obligation of the revenue and full payment for their broadcast packages they need 15 races so in order to do that they need to they have eight now they have to add a lot more races and I, there's an irony for me in this. I don't know how you feel about it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But there's an irony in this in that Formula One for the longest time has sort of moved away from Europe. I remember uh, Mr. E saying that Europe was basically toast and that he was moving the series uh, to Malaysia, to Singapore, to Vietnam, Vietnam um, to India, to China, to Turkey, uh, and a lot of far-flung locations that he was looking at uh, additionally. And... Um, there's a lot of reasons for that because as tobacco money went out, the revenue needed to be maintained for Formula One, the teams were losing their title sponsorship um, revenue streams, so they were looking for the prize money, um, and this is the very business model that was sort of done to, to benefit the top teams to keep the series together, which is the very situation that's hurting Williams. But having said that, um, when he sold it to, when Bernie sold it to CBC, it was still the same concept, uh, looking for all these alternate uh, markets, these emerging markets, you might say, and APAC. Um, the interesting thing on that was when Liberty was buying it, they, they understood what the fans were saying, and they were quick to say, sorry, there's bugs, uh, they were quick to say, Oh, no, 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 we're, we're totally dedicated to Europe. You know, those traditional races and traditional checks, that's a must. And, you know, the other thing is America, we really want another race. Now, the very first thing they did is signed up Vietnam. Fair enough. But to their credit, you have to hand it credit. They did bring in uh, Zandvoort. Uh, they brought France back. So we could all argue over Paul Ricard's circuit, but they did. Um... But I find it interesting that in this situation, when they desperately need 15 races to get the revenue stream to fill the coffers of the prize money for the teams, that it's Europe who is possibly, you know, saving their neck 
and not these far-flung locations. Uh, that's uh, you know, it's not because these uh, races like Japan or anything you know are trying to purposely make it difficult. They're difficult times, and I understand that. But it is kind of funny. Um, maybe you know, post COVID, maybe they'll remember that that Europe was the one that was trying to find ways to make 15 races. Um, and I'm looking at you, Germany, and Formula One. Work that out. There needs to be a German Grand Prix. Um, so. I find that interesting. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think about that? What else is there to talk about in Formula One? Um, that's about it. You know, there's a lot of negativity on social media around Formula One right now. I don't really know. It's uh, it's disheartening to read it all. Um, it really is. It's uh, it's it's like with the COVID response and what they're trying to do to to put together a season and. And, you know, it's like, well, you know, it, everyone's, I don't know, it's just like mob mentality. It's like, you know, well, you know how for all those Formula One owners are. You know, actually, we don't. We don't. We don't know. That's just, to me, it's intellectually lazy. Um, there's a lot of good people work for Formula One. A lot of great people that work for all these teams working really hard to figure this out. And it's difficult times. And, you know, it's easy to set in your... Uh, the comfort of your own home and be critical of the decisions they're trying to make. I don't like all the decisions they're making. Of course I don't. Um, some of them I'm thinking, <laughs> what? But, you know, it's difficult times. And that's, you know, I just feel like that's in a lot of ways. When we remove the individual, when we just lump people in the big groups and categories so we can mentally manage them, it's just intellectually lazy. Um, it's like when I hear people say, well, you know how Formula One drivers, all those Formula One... No, we don't. We don't know. We think we do, but we don't. You know? I mean, look at Alex Albon's story. It's a compelling story. It's, it's amazing. And you wouldn't know that if you just chuck him into a Formula One driver's group. Lewis's story is compelling. And everyone knows that one. And it's a great story. Uh, Esteban Ocon's great story. Um, you know, and that, and that goes for team bosses and, and Formula One and people that work in Formula One, all the way to the FIA to Michael Massey and his team and everything that they're trying to do. These, these are people. These aren't groups. They're people. And they're working hard to come up with a solution under very, very, very difficult times. And it's not really helpful that we're all getting ramped up, chucking them into some group that we can, you know, lambast and, and feel virtuous about, you know? Um, I don't know. I just feel like some of that virtue becomes a vice in that sense. But anyway, I'm just rambling. What else in Formula One? Um, well, it's not that, not that far away, and it gets started in Austria. I'm excited about it. I am excited to see how the other races, like IndyCar, NASCAR, and some other series have managed it uh, from, a, from a COVID perspective and the protective measures they're trying to do. I thought it was interesting uh, that Ross was very keen to say, you know, look, if one team member gets it, it's not shutting the whole series down again like it did in Australia. And we've got measures for that. So that's, uh, that's good. That's interesting. Um, and it's good that they've, they've thought that out. Um, I think what we're seeing is a tip of the iceberg on the amount of effort and work that's being done to do this behind the scenes. I think it's, it's monumental what they're trying to do. And we're just seeing sort of the tip of the iceberg and what they're sharing with us. We're not seeing all the memos, all the emails, all the details behind this. So anyway, keep that in mind before you jump on Twitter or Instagram and start railing on somebody because you know how all those, you know, uh, uh, Formula One people are, you know how all those drivers are, or even when you get down to fans, well, that's, you know, you guys are all a bunch of Yankees, you're Americans, that's how, you know, you guys are all like, and it, well, no, we're not. We, we all come to Formula One different. Same for British or anywhere else around the world, the Brazilian fans, the Japanese fans, I'll guarantee you they're upset about losing the Japanese Grand Prix. So I guess what I'm saying is have a little, a little compassion on this thing. I don't know. I was on a podcast, uh, great guys over at Motormouth recently, and they asked me about this, and um, it was just sort of the first thing that came to mind. But And they're British guys. They're super nice guys. But I, I, I said, you know, I always kept in mind uh, what Sting uh, said when he said that men go crazy in congregations. They only get better one by one. So 
Um, that always resonated with me. I think that's true. You know, look at the efforts that they're trying to do um, from an individual basis. Look what Sky Sports F1 is trying to do with content and the kinds of content they've been generating for our entertainment over COVID and this lockdown. Um, you know, from from all the interviews they're doing, the watch-alongs, uh, Ted's Notebook, the stuff they're doing. Um, you know, they're trying, man. They're trying. They're just people, and they're trying hard. And uh, so from, from me personally to all of you in Formula One, whether you're at F1, the FIA, from the teams, the drivers, from the broadcast companies that are trying to develop content, um, I don't know. The rest of the world reading social media doesn't, isn't that keen on it. But from my perspective, I say thank you. Thank you for everything you've done, even sim racing. I'm not a sim racing Everyone knows I'm not a fan of sitting around watching people play a game and sim racing. It's not my thing. I didn't watch any of it. Uh, but I respect it and I appreciate you did it because there were a lot of people that were entertained by that. And that's great. And they got to see a side of these young drivers that they don't normally get to see. And they think it's terrific. It's great. So anyway. All right, folks. Is that enough? That's probably enough, don't you think? All right. All right. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Thanks so much for watching. As always, see ya.